One of the advantages of traveling just off the highway is the food is so much better. Traditional South African food like biltong and milk tart and bunny chow. But for me on the road, I'll take any opportunity to turn a pit stop into a chip stop. So today is all about slop chips. Now a true chip is pronounced chup and it's special. You see, a while ago, a friend of mine, David Batsoffen, suggested an idea for an episode of Just Off the Highway. He knows the suburb of Linden in Johannesburg very well, and he helped us source a great place for traditional South African slug chips. Now, I want to say right from the beginning that we paid for everything that we bought. We didn't get anything for free, and this is not actually a competition because everybody I know has their own special posse for slop chips. So support your local slop chip emporium. Otherwise, this local delicacy faces extinction from an onslaught of frozen, pre-cut, pre-packaged invaders. Now, I wasn't looking for anywhere pretentious either, because the best slop chips are made where hard-working people buy their lunch. And so we went to Gregory's in Linden, it's rightly famous amongst slop chip connoisseurs as the place for long chips. <laughs> That's what we used to call them as kids. Has anybody heard that recently? I don't know. Whatever you guys call your slop chips, let us know in the comments. Obviously in any in industry, um, experience is key. Uh, in this case, I believe I do have an upper hand being Portuguese. Um, but on a serious note, it's, it boils down to potatoes and oil. Um, potatoes, I believe, just from experience, um, a white potato. So it's a BP1 or a Cifra. Just because it gives you that beautiful white chip after it's been blanched. Because you, you don't want it for yellow to start. So when you put it in the oil, it's going to go even more yellow. So you want that crispy golden color, is what anyone would want. Um, oil, cleanliness of the oil. Um, you need a good sunflower oil which is what we also also use and that results in the perfect chip at the end of the day in my experience thank you cheers thanks no change take job please thank you well that's traditional as every schoolboy knows you don't get change you get chance cheers thank you enjoy it cheers now usually i just dig into the packet while I'm driving. But because I'm going to share this with my mate, I figure in the interest of being a little bit COVID careful, I'm going to keep it closed. And that's why I bought an extra packet. Because let's face it, anybody who can control himself around hot chips is probably a psychopath. Mm. Let's go. Before we tuck in, I'd like to introduce the instigator of this episode. He is an award-winning radio personality and travel blogger, and he also has his own YouTube channel called Travel and Things, which you need to check out and then return to this channel. And his name is David Batsoffen. David, how's it? Well, thanks, Alan. Thanks for inviting me to uh, this meal. <laughs> this socially distant, sanitized meal. As a travel blogger, let's kick off straight away. Where do you source your finest slop chips? When, when I thought about this, I was thinking wherever I lay my hat is my home. Wherever I pick up slop chips is the best. But for me, it's Kalki's in Colt Bay. It's just the ambiance and everything that goes with pate. Because there is a whole, I don't know, nuance when you eat chips. It can't just be slop chips in a, in a packet or something like that. There's got to be something else. And they've got it. Ah, now you see, I'm a bit of a purist there because for me, slop chips in a packet is the best thing. Listen, tuck in. I don't know whether you are a salt or a salt and vinegar person yeah. or whether... Uh, do you remember that old uh, book about South African English called A Big Yours? A Big Yours, you are. A Big Yours. Raw Bone Milan. That's right. <laughs> and <laughs> they referred to a condiment as martyr's horse. So I don't know if you like <laughs> if you like tomato sauce because no, there isn't any. Uh, there isn't any here, and basically that's essentially a vegetable. So 
Tuck in salt or salt and vinegar? Salt and vinegar. Let's let's start with. Go for it. Oh, oh look at those. Look at that. You know, there's there's nothing better. The only problem with with slop chips is they're not road trip food. You can't eat them while you're driving. Ah, uh, yeah, you can't eat them and stay clean while you're no. driving. And your steering wheel is going to go to. Heck in a handbasket. <laughs> Are you going to partake in some of these? I'm going to grab some of those right now. All right. There's your... Yeah. My spanners. Your spanners. My favorite slop chips as a child was at Cape Town Station. Okay. And Cape Town Station, there was no such thing as regular or whatever. It was small or big. <laughs> okay. And you had three different options. You had plain, salt and vinegar, or lots of salt and vinegar. <laughs> that was basically what you had. Yeah. So you got your first fish and chips behind the blacksmiths. In front of the blacksmiths. Got to put blacksmith. it in context. <laughs> okay. And, and that memory is so vivid. I mean, I can smell that fish and chip shop. And my mom would, would take my sister and I there and we'd, we'd have it for lunch or something like that. And that was old school in uh, that white clean newsprint. Mm. Do you know that they used to put it in newsprint because newspaper ink was sterile? Oh, I did not know that. So it was actually a very hygienic way of, of wrapping uh, fish and chips. Okay. And of course, it's entirely fat free. You only pay for the potato. You get fat <laughs> for free. free. Because I was looking at you going, where are you going with this? <laughs> there are dietitians who are watching this going, it's not fat free, it's starch and nothing else. Mm. I have to say mm. that I've, I've separated them. You've sort of just held everything together there. Well, I tried separating them, but I was hungry. <laughs> but for me, mm -hmm. without the vinegar, if this was a competition, mm -hmm. the salt would lose points. While we're speaking on the finer culinary points, let me just pour myself a cream soda here to cleanse my palate I'm as I choose between the two. If you've got a hangover, this is about the only thing short of an emergency room that will sort it out. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. 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 I've, always, I've always wanted to do, you know, a crocodile dundee. To go, to go to the, yeah, to yeah. say to someone who's got one of those American style chips and yeah. say to them, you know, that or not the chip, this or a chip. Or a chip. <laughs> <laughs> there are those people, you know, who say that a slop chip is just essentially, basically a, a French fry or a, a Belgian pomme frite. <laughs> yeah. Those people are known as wrong <laughs> because... This is something different. This is South African. And I think that the problem with uh, the American fries is, first of all, it's too thin. Mm. It's too hard. So it's basically just a vegetarian roof nail. <laughs> a real slop chip has to be a little bit wobbly, a bit, yeah. <laughs> a bit <Literally>. flaccid. <laughs> you see, now, if it's too, if it's too crispy, then... <laughs> What happens is they get stuck in your throat and you get flaccid <laughs> reflux. But a boom. <laughs> so as we wrap up the interview, let's raise our glasses to the humble, fantastic potato and to the slup chip, the best thing that you can make out of a potato, other than vodka. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so that's it. Time fries when you're having fun. Thanks to David Batsoffen for the idea. Check out his blog, Travel and Things, for tons of useful travel information. And if you've enjoyed this detour just off the highway, give us a like or a comment. If you'd like to discover more offbeat South African stories with me, please subscribe. And be sure to click on that bell so that you get notifications whenever I post a, a new episode. Usually about once a week. Thanks also to Gregory's in Linden for allowing us to film on the busiest day of the week. And thanks to Marcel Hamilton for her hospitality. So we ended by contemplating the greatness that is the slup chip. Chips are informal, cheerful, a little bit rebellious. They're quintessentially South African. So hey, I'm not fat. 
I'm cultural. Here's a quick update on the Slup Chips episode. Yesterday, after the shoot, I was pretty maxed out on potato chips. But, hey, you never know what's going to happen, so I took some home. 24 hours later, just a quick spin in the old Nucrewave oven, and they are still delicious. Not as perfect as yesterday, but delicious. That is the sign of a great Slup Chip. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gregory's in London. Man, thanks, Sean. What? No, you can't have any. Go away. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>